Can a cheap USB mic sound as good as a more expensive studio mic? I believe that if you set the mic up correctly and then you follow my secret sauce in using a free application, I think you can get pretty close. You can get studio quality audio at a budget price. Think of this as a bit of a David against Goliath challenge. Here's our David, and we've pitted it against this audio Goliath, which is the SM7B. So let's start with the cheap mic and some basics. And I'm not just going to cover vocal quality. I'm also going to show you, you can make a few changes. I'm going to give you a few little tips to make it easy to get consistently good audio and make it easier to use your cheap mic to get really good audio quickly. First off, the settings. Now, if you're just recording yourself, say like this, some mics like the Yeti, for instance, they've got a switch that you can just flick to turn the mic onto a cardioid setting because that's best for videos like this. Getting the mic set up correctly is going to make it so much easier for us to enhance the audio later, which we're going to do once we've got it set up correctly. So next in our setting up, I'm going to set the gain and I'm going to set this at about half. Now gain is just another term for how strong the signal coming out of the mic is. And then I'm just going to plug it into my computer. Now a question I hear a lot is, how loud should I have my audio? What should I set my gain to? Now, we're not going to get all complicated here and go into all the audio standards for broadcasting. This video, it ain't for these audio geeks. It's for normal people who just want to get good audio quickly. So my advice is simply just to play with the gain settings. Get it where you think it should be. Do a few test recordings and just see who you get on. In fact, it's far better to be on the quieter side because you see, boosting audio, that's really easy. And I'm going to show you how to do that later. But if it's too loud, it can be really hard. In fact, in some cases, next to impossible to fix. Next, and actually this is really important, your room. The room that you're recording in, and this goes for any mic, it's not just the Yeti. Ideally, you don't want anything that makes a noise. Other computers, hard drives, anything with a fan. Oh, and that includes ceiling fans and aircon units. Ideally, you want a room with lots of soft objects like carpets, curtains, furniture, anything to absorb the sound and stop the empty room sound. Rooms with lots of hard flat surfaces don't make for good audio. Next look at actually using the mic. Now mics, they sound better. They've got more bass when you actually get closer to the mic. It's actually called a proximity effect. Ideally, what you want to be, you want to be about four inches away from the mic. But this is going to open us up to other issues, mainly a thing called plosives. And that's when the air coming out of your mouth, it causes this popping sound. And you notice it more with P's and T's. But there's a couple of things that we can do to combat this and other mic related issues. Having your mic on your desk, that is a terrible idea. It's going to be in your way. And every time you use your keyboard or your bang your desk, it'll sound really bad on your audio. Getting a boom arm like this. That's going to stop the mic from picking up the bangs on your desk. And it's also going to make it far easier to get the mic closer to your mouth without it getting in the way. And we also want one of these cheap pop filters. These stop the plosives, the popping sounds that we get by having the mic close to your mouth. I've now switched over to the Yeti and we'll see what the audio sounds like right out of the mic. It'll probably sound OK, but as you'll see in a minute, we can make it sound so much better. What I've done, I've recorded a short passage on the Yeti and I've actually recorded the same passage on the SM7B. And this is where we're going to go head to head. And like in the David and Goliath story, we're going to level up the game a little bit. We're going to use a free program called Audacity, which works on PC and Mac. I'm going to show you how you can push the quality of even the cheapest USB Macs into studio mic quality just by clicking a couple of buttons. Now, before some of the audio experts start posting in the comments how there are better ways to do what I'm going to show you, I know, I'm aware, this video is for ordinary people who don't want to get into the weeds onto the whys and the whats and all the finer points of audio. This is for those who just want a quick way to make their audio sound a lot better using nothing more than factory settings. So let's jump over to Audacity. So I'm going to drag in our Yeti sample into Audacity like that. Now this is it straight out of the mic and we'll just listen to that, see what it sounds like. Here's a short sample of me doing a voiceover for this demonstration. 
we're going to see if a cheap USB mic can stack up against a more expensive professional studio mic. Right, okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to remove any S that may be on the track. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a sample from here. I'm going to come up to Effect. I'm going to come down to Noise Removal and Repair, and I want Noise Reduction. So I'll select that. Now, first thing we want to do here is get a noise profile. So what it's going to do, it's going to take a sample from the audio, and then it can use that to analyze the rest of the track, and then remove the sound. So we'll click Get Noise Profile. We want to double click to highlight the entire track, come up to the effect, and then click Repeat Noise Reduction. There we go, that's done. This is why when I start to record, I always leave the space. I just sit there, stay perfectly quiet, and let the mic capture the room sound. This then allows me to take any hiss or any other type of noises out that may be affecting the track. Now next, we're going to add some effects to give our voice a little bit more presence. So I'm going to double click on the track. Come up to Effect, come down to EQ and Filters, and I want Filter Curve EQ. From the Presets and Settings, I'm going to come down to Factory Presets, and I want Bass Boost. I'll select that, click Apply. Keeping the track selected, back up to Effect, back to EQ and Filters, down to Filter Curve EQ, and this time, Factory Presets, we'll go Treble Boost, click Apply. And one last time, Effect, EQ and Filters, Filter Curve EQ, and this time Factory Presets again, but this time we want Low Roll Off for Speech. I'll select that and click Apply. Now lastly what we're going to do, we're going to add some compression. So I've still got the track selected. If I haven't got the track selected, I just double click to select it like that. Come up to Effect. Now this time I want to come down to Volume and Compression and I want Compressor. I'll select that. I'm going to stick with the default settings. Now what I've actually done here, because I just want to show you, because this is something that may trip you up. I've actually altered the default settings, so I'm just going to move them around a little bit more. So if you ever move these and you want to set it back to default, all you've got to do, come up to here, Presets and Settings, select that, Factory Presets, and then click Defaults, and it will go back to the factory default. So just for this lesson, we're just going to leave it on the factory defaults and I'm going to click apply. So let's see what that sounds like now. Here's a short sample of me doing a voiceover for this demonstration. We're going to see if a cheap USB mic can stack up against a more expensive professional studio mic. Now I think that sounds pretty good. Now just so you can remember what the original sounded like, I'll just drag that in onto another track there underneath. And I'm just going to mute the top track, the one we've just worked on. And let's play the original. Here's a short sample of me doing a voiceover for this demonstration. And let's play the top track again. Here's a short sample of me doing a voiceover for this demonstration. So, the moment of truth. What's it going to sound like against our studio mic? Well, here's a sample of the Shure SM7B. Here's a short sample of me doing a voiceover for this demonstration. We're going to see if a cheap USB mic can stack up against a more expensive professional studio mic. Here's a short sample of me doing a voiceover for this demonstration. We're going to see if a cheap USB mic can stack up against a more expensive professional studio mic. What do you think? Do you think the Yeti with our secret sauce, did it sound good? Did it stack up against the more expensive studio mic? Let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to know how to connect your USB mic directly to your camera so you can capture your audio and video together, you'll want to watch this video next. I hope that helps. Until next time, bye for now.